everyone, welcome to Nomad Sea Kayaking. So today we're talking a little bit about uh, help and support for business. And you notice we called this video save us as opposed to help us and that's because wherever we look, wherever I look, um, as somebody who runs a small business I keep hearing that everybody's helping us and there's support for us and yet I have to be honest I haven't seen any of it. I haven't seen any of it from our bank I want to talk to everybody about how you can help to save us as a business. I'm going to talk about two things. One is the whole idea of support and helping businesses. The second thing I want to talk about then is uh, Nomad Sea Kayaking's strategies. What I would ask you to do is, if you can, give us a thumbs up. We're not a commercial um, channel on YouTube. We don't make any money. We don't get sponsorships or avenue to be able to communicate with our customers and anybody that's interested. And also share some skills and tips and stuff and hiking gear, paddling, paddling techniques, all the rest of it. The main subject here, the, the main sort of message I want to get across is support local small business. Okay? If you're in Britain, support British business. If you're in America, support American business. If you're in Spain, support Spanish business. Preferably stuff that's local in your area if you can. If not, and you want to support something that's on the other side of the country, great. We as a company, Nomad Sea Kayaking, we turn over less than £100,000 a year. Uh, we drive a vehicle that is 15 years old. Um, we you know, keep our costs down. We don't draw any dividends from the business. We're talking about plumbers, sole traders, small limited companies, people of generally sort of five or less, ten or less people somewhere in that region, uh, plumbers, electricians, bakers, butchers, little corner shops, um, uh, cottage industries, people working from home. For all of these businesses, one thing we have in common is that the revenue streams have been switched off. They haven't been reduced, they're not intermittent, there's zero, nothing, no money coming in at all, nothing. But we still have to pay all our bills. For the business, the business still has to pay its costs, okay? So our bank, for example, we have a small loan that we took out last year for, for a, a project, a short-term loan. We, the, the bank, refuses to give us a payment holiday, even though they've been instructed to do so, they currently refuse to give us a payment holiday on our loan. Now, this is not having a go at the bank, I'm just using this as an example. We still have to pay our loan, but we've got no money coming in. So we're going to pay 150 quid for argument's sake a month on the loan. There's no money coming in. We're then going to default on the loan. Okay. So every business relies on two things that are very, very important. One is cash. You've got to have money coming in to pay for the money going out. Two is cash flow. The time periods are when that money comes into the business. When you've got money coming out, you need to accumulate enough funds to pay for those costs. Money comes in and money goes out. And if the money going out is less than the money coming in, you have a profit, okay? The revenues have been switched off for all businesses, ourselves included. So the message to you as the consumer, and to me, and to my colleagues, to everybody around us, is go out there and spend money. You don't have to spend huge amounts, just spend a little bit. Go to your local butcher, get your electrician in. Don't hold off on that little paint job. You know, in our neighborhood, we live in a little village, painter and decorator up the road, he's sitting there, he's got a family to feed and he's got no work. You know, if he got a, a job to paint a garage, well they would put, I don't know, 50 quid or 80 quid or 100 pound in his pocket. That's 100 pound, that makes a huge difference, it helps him to pay the bills, buy food, etc. I just spent like eight pound, uh, 15 pounds with one company, a British company that's like 200 years old, and I bought a little item to make me feel a little bit better, it's 15 pounds. What am I gonna get for 15 pounds? My point is, if you go and buy a cup of coffee, it's like four, three pound 50 for a cup of coffee. You don't get a lot for your 10, 15 pounds, right? I'm supporting a British company, number one, in times when they need the support, and a company that's almost 200 years old. Imagine if that company went bankrupt. A 200 year old British company disappearing forever. That should not be allowed to happen. So support local business. Um, and another one I bought, I bought a little item um, for like nine pounds 
completely overpriced, but it was a nine pound buy on eBay for my hiking gear. Very chuffed to bits. It's a B day, by the way, which we're gonna be covering off in another video. That's gonna be really interesting. My point is that I've still gone out and just buying a little bit of something here and there. We're all going out and we're going to the supermarkets. You know, the supermarkets are making money. They, they, their sales are going up 30, 40%. When on the lockdown on the 16th of March, their revenues went through the roof because we were buying more stuff, which is great. We need to do that. And the supermarkets are doing a great job in supporting us, but they are businesses with very, very rich shareholders, very wealthy people making a lot of money. So please, please support your small business. Just spend a little bit of money and do it with the local, a seamstress in your village, support them. The small companies, the farmer who's selling some produce in his little farm shop, um, the baker, you know, the butcher, the, the electrician, help them, okay? <laughs> yeah, obviously keep your social distancing. I'm not going to go on about that. We all know about that, right? So what are we doing with our customer bookings and with our members? So let's cover off our members. Our members, we're not a, a club. We're a private limited company, but we have a membership where people pay a premium each month on a one-year contract and it's renewed each year. And within that um, membership, they can then do either all of the trips free of charge, all of the courses free of charge, or everything free of charge, depending on which level of membership they have, and there's three levels. Uh, what we're doing with our members is for the period of the lockdown, you will get that at the end of your contract. The three month, a two month lockdown, we'll give you an extra two months at the end, with no payment. So we'll make sure that we've been fair to all of our members. Okay, so with our existing bookings, up to when this whole COVID thing started, we had bookings coming in for the 2020 season, which generally starts around about April and finishes at the end of September. So for all of our customers that already have bookings, we are, we're not cancelling anything. It's business as usual. <coughs> Editing break. <coughs> <laughs> so for our existing customers that have bookings already, all we're doing is we're putting your bookings back. So we're monitoring the situation because nobody knows when this is going to end. All of the existing customers with bookings up to the 14th of May, we sent them an email and said to them, we are giving, we're putting it back, and this is why we're putting it back, um, to the next day, we've given them the next date. That's only up to the 14th of May. So anybody that's after the 14th of May, so for example, on the 16th of May, we've got a night trip. Everybody that's booked on that night trip, that is still going ahead as we stand now, all right? That could change. So anybody that's been put ahead have been given a date and that has been rescheduled on our system. So the booking's there, it's got the new date on it and everybody's been communicated with. If that date doesn't suit you because you can't make it, we're not going to penalize you, but you have to have a date. Um, so you put onto that date. If you can't make that date, you get the next two consecutive dates to choose from. If you can't make one date, you make the other. It's not open-ended. It can't be. There has to be a limit to this. Or you have to be able to pick one of those two dates or you lose your trip and you won't get a refund. You can't leave it open-ended because if you do, we have done this many, many years in the past and I had a guy like two years later, he came back and said, yeah, I've got a book here, I want my trip. And we can't operate a business like that. So there has to be a limitation. So if you've been booked, say, like the Seal Colony trip, which is scheduled for the 4th of April, has been moved to the 17th of May, if you can't make the 17th of May, that's not a big problem. Let us know and then we'll give you the next consecutive day that is already published on the website. If the restrictions are lifted tomorrow, then we will com communicate with everybody and try to bring those trips forward if we can. If the lockdown continues on, then we will just continue putting the trips back as far as we possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> Our commitment is anyone that has booked and anybody who will book will get their event, period. And we will carry that over as long as we possibly can. So if that means that we've got to carry it over into 2021, then that's what we'll do, okay? But I have to be clear that as a business, we have to service our existing business that have already paid and we need money coming in because if we don't have money coming in, we're not gonna have money to pay for fuel, for food, for our wild camping trips, our all-inclusive trips, which are almost all fully booked up, um, for money to service those events, and those events will not be able to go ahead. In other words, what that will make us is insolvent. If this crisis pushes us into insolvency, then that's where, like all other businesses, we'll be. We'll be bankrupt and everybody will lose. 
No one will get their trip, no one will get their money, nobody will get anything. We'll all be buggered. And that is just the reality of it. I think we're very well placed to weather this. We need your support. We need you to help to save us. Because without us, there is nobody to take you out kayaking. What are your options? Well, you can go down to the next nearest sea kayaking company in Cornwall. It's a six, seven hour drive down there. You're gonna take the day to drive out. You're gonna pay for fuel. You're gonna accommodate yourself overnight. You're gonna pay for accommodation. You're gonna pay for food. And then you have to then still pay for that trip, course, event, whatever you're gonna be doing. And then you're gonna drive back. So that's one alternative. Or you can go out and spend a thousand pound, 11, 1200 pound buying a kayak. Um, buying all your other safety gear and then you can work out for yourselves how to go out there on the sea and do the sort of trips that we do and nobody you don't see people out there doing it because it's not easy companies like us are needed we all need to get out there and we need to take care of our mental health our physical health particularly at a time like this and when we come out of these restrictions people are going to want to get out there they're going to want to exercise they're going to want to socialize with other people put a big smile on their face paddling out in beautiful sunshine and lovely conditions now let me just cover off refunds because um, I just want to be clear on how this works um, and I would ask that when you think about any company you go to if you buy something and you you know you've got a booking with a and b don't go and ask him for a refund because you know what they don't have the money the money's not there you may have you may say oh well I've paid them they've got my money they don't have your money the way a business works money comes in and then it gets spent on costs usually servicing the service that you want a bed and breakfast kayaking trips whatever it might be so if you're asking for a refund they don't have the money so just get your head around that that's the first thing second thing is the policy for nomad sea kayaking on refunds is we refund under two circumstances and two circumstances only the first is if you book an event any event and you cancel within the 14 day cooling off period that it's known as um, you will get a full refund straight away the second one is if Nomad Sea Kite can do anything that is within our control. So in other words, you know, that is our, not our fault, but within our control. So we break down, we don't turn up for a trip, we don't have your kayak there, a guide is sick, we don't have enough guides. Anything like that is within, inside of our control as a business, then you will get a full refund. We do not refund just because you ask for a refund. The reasons are, for the two reasons I've already given, but there are a number of other reasons. There's no money to give you a refund, even if we wanted to. Even if we could give you a refund, we wouldn't, because if we do it for one person, we set a precedent in law. Therefore, we have to do it for everybody. And that would bankrupt any business. That all being said, we have committed to making sure that everybody gets their event. And for us, you know, it, there's two things. One. Uh, safety is paramount so we need to make sure the conditions that we're taking you out in remember where this is on the sea that these tidal conditions exposed to all sorts of intrinsic dangers that that are intrinsic to sea kayaking and the nature of what we do we need to make sure it's safe and that we, we, we fit within the law and the remit that is set to, down to us by the regulator second thing is to make sure that you get a quality event so obviously if it's raining it's windy it's cold it's miserable we kind of always look to put these things off. If you're worried about your event going ahead, don't just say, oh, well, I can't make that day, I want a refund, because we've already said clearly, it's not gonna happen for all the reasons already stated. Look at the date that you're gonna, that, you can, that, that you've been given. If you cannot do it, um, then we can give you another date. But think carefully as well. Remember, well, look, you book a flight, um, and you can't make, and for some reason, it's little Johnny's birthday, or it's, something comes up, you can't then ring the airline and say, oh no, no I can't make it for like, you know, put me on to another date. They'll charge you for that, all right? They'll charge you for that service. We don't. If you can't make that date, we'll put you on to another date. And we don't charge you for that. What we do say is we're limiting those two dates for you. The alternative is we can start moving you and we can keep moving you to as many dates as you want. We'll charge 25 quid every time we move you, right? So it's a balancing act. So please don't, you know, contact us and start demanding refunds we're not obliged to give refunds unless you in within those two those two parameters okay and finally is communication so in this time where we furloughed essentially the business is just in shutdown there's in kind of being mothballed almost the best thing to do is just telephone don't email 
because there's not always somebody there to reply to your email. Facebook is our primary social media. We've got the website, so if you've got an event, go onto the website, go to your event. So for example, the Seal Colony trip, go to the Seal Colony trip, scroll down the page and you'll see a little section that says weather and notes from your guide. Click on that and you will get live notes from your lead guide. So if I am leading your trip, I will put notes saying, oh, your trip is on Saturday, it's a bit windy and it's gonna be cold, bring an extra jacket. So it's live. In other words, I will go on as and when I need to, update those notes and that's a way of communicating. Go onto the website and have a look at the information there. And if you're still not sure, you can then go to the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions on the website as well, and also look at the blog. All of these videos go onto the blog. So we've got WhatsApp, Facebook, Facebook messaging, website, telephone, uh, and email. And I think there's something else I've left out, but that's already six forms of communication that we communicate with you and you communicate with us. There's no excuse, guys. You can't say we didn't know and we pride ourselves in our communication and managing expectations of our customers. So the information is out there. Please use it. Support your small business because if you don't, those businesses will go bankrupt. And please don't assume that because someone's in business, they're rich. They're not. It can be very, very tough. Most people are sitting at home doing their thing at home. We're out in a field. We're still self isolating. We're just outside um, our cottage, but we're in a field. There's nobody around. Have a look around. There's a group of good people there. We are self isolating. You see, there's no one around. It's just me. Get on me on my own. Big field over there. Nobody around. I'm two meters away from anybody. So before everybody starts kicking off and screaming, uh, we are in complete isolation. Okay, so please save us, help us, work with us. We've got some great videos coming up. We've got one on pooping out in the woods. We've changed our policy on that, and we're going to be covering that off. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be very, very interesting. Then we're going to have a separate video on um, our bidet, which is again toilet related, which is a very sensitive subject. But that's going to be a lot of fun as well, and really interesting because. Although we try to make it a little bit of a light heart and a bit of a joke, there's real sort of skill in these things. They're not easy to do. It's not easy to go and poop under a tree when you're used to a toilet. Keep a smile on your face. Look out for your neighbors. Look out for the elderly in the area. Support each other. Find a loved one and keep them close. And, um, you know, spread the love a little bit, okay? The world's a changing place. We need to spread the love. All right, we'll see you out in the water soon. Keep your head up, keep smiling, no matter out.